We've talked before on this channel about some Japanese entertainment giants that aren't as well known in the West, like Doraemon and Chibi Maruko-chan, and today, we're going to add one more to that list, Anpanman. This legendary franchise has been a popular request since I started this series, but first, a big shout out to Koops who helped me do research on this video. And stick around until the end, because I had a few special guests help me too, you're not gonna want to pass this episode up. Once upon a time, shooting stars called Stars of Life entered the kindly baker Uncle Jam's oven through the chimney while he was baking Anpan, a Japanese pastry with red bean paste filling. This event gave birth to a supernatural baby who would later grow up to be the kind-hearted hero Anpanman. No, the origin story really is that simple. Some of Anpanman's bakery-inspired hero buddies include Shokupanman, based on white bread and not to be confused with powdered toast man, Currypanman, the rival of Shokupanman and based on curry bread, and Cream Panda, a grade schooler hero based on cream-filled bread and resembles a panda. Anpanman's arch-enemy is Baikinman, a bacterial villain dead set on causing havoc and defeating Anpanman. Baikinman's partners in crime include Dokinchan, an imp-like girl that has a crush on Shokupanman, Horror Man, a spooky scary skeleton, and many Kabirunrun, little monsters that cause mold. Of course, being bread-based, mold is one of Anpanman's weaknesses, others being moisture and dirt. This pastry-themed hero is a charitable character, not just in fighting off the dastardly deeds of Vikingman, but in the selfless act of ripping off a piece of his edible head. Losing this piece will make him weaker, but he does it with no hesitation to feed someone in need. Not to worry if Anpanman's head gets moldy, moistened, or a piece is removed. Uncle Jam can bake a new head for our eponymous hero. When it lands on Anpanman's shoulders, voila, he's back in business. No matter where he is, whenever a person in a pinch shouts his name, this hero will always fly in to save the day. Anpanman began life as a picture book series in 1973, spanning over 150 different stories and ending in 2013. However, Anpanman's round smiling face is most recognizable for his anime, Sore Ike Anpanman, first broadcast on Japanese television in 1988. Beyond that, Sore Ike Anpanman set a world record in 2009 for most characters in an animated TV series, a record that still stands as of recording. Anpanman is a Japanese media powerhouse. The anime is consistently in the top TV anime rankings week to week, the theme song is one of the most popular anime openings in Japan, and, as returning viewers of my channel might expect, has had countless toys, video games, and movies. His influence on Japan is so strong, many babies learn Anpanman as their first word. Japan's iconic Beanbon Boy is recognizable by residents of all ages, and his positive messages have influenced generations of children. But did his altruism gain him any attention in the English-speaking world? Today, we're going to look at the English dub history of Anpanman to see if this foreign food fighter amassed the same level of triumph in the West, or if his taste wasn't suited to foreign palates. The origins of Anpanman's first English dub are not entirely clear. According to a document from TMS, there was an English dub produced from 1998 to 2002. Nothing is known about who dubbed it or where it was aired, although it's possible it was on Animax. The Thai and Sinhala dubs of Anpanman are evidently based on this English dub, as in the title cards of episodes in the Sinhala version match the ones on the document mentioned earlier. In addition, the opening and ending themes are in English, with lyrics closely following the Japanese version. Unfortunately, there are no further credits pertaining to the English material. There was also a dub produced by Sinar in 2002 or 2003, totaling 156 episodes. And there is no footage, no audio, and almost no info. Keyword on almost. Renowned voice actor and director Richard Dumont, also known for his work on countless projects like Winx Club, the Little Lulu Show, and April in the Extraordinary World, listed on his resume he was the voice director for Anpanman for Nippon Television and Sinar Corporation. And not only was he the director, he was the adaptation writer too. With this being the number one lead, I tried several avenues to contact Dumont, from emailing the address listed on his website to calling and emailing his agent, and contacting his agent did the trick. I received a response the next morning, and it was not the response I hoped to see. Hello, thanks for reaching out. Unfortunately, Richard does not do interviews and would like to gracefully decline. 
I followed up to see if Richard could at least point me to somebody else, but didn't receive a reply. Back to the drawing board. I've also tried to contact Wildbrain, as they bought out Senar slash Cookie Jar. But again, nothing. I've tried calling them, I've tried emailing them, nothing. And I've even tried contacting some other Canadian voice actors and actresses, but again, nothing. So, as of today, there is no further information about this dub. Now before we move on to a confirmed adaptation, there are rumors that Richard Kynes, known for being Andy on Curb Your Enthusiasm and Bing Bong in Pixar's Inside Out, was involved in a dub of the Anpanman film Fly, Chibigon. However, there's no evidence of this outside of some questionable comments. Anpanman didn't have another English adaptation until, at the latest, 2009. This dub was recorded in Hong Kong and aired on Cartoon Network in Southeast Asia and Pogo in India. Information is limited on this dub too, but not as limited as the information on the Sinar dub. Not to mention this one has actual footage. The Lost Media Wiki refers to this as the Pogo dub because of the footage available being from a commercial. But given how much matches up between info about this Hong Kong dub, it's evident these dubs are one and the same. The only major difference is the Pogo commercial calls the program Pam Pam Man Bread Man. There are only two voice actresses confirmed to be in this version, Muriel Hoffman and Lily Tronkale, both of whom listed the show on their resumes online. Muriel Hoffman was the voice of most notably Biking Man, called Meanie Man in this dub. She also voiced Flour, Mustard, Biscuit, and Sticks. Hoffman is also known for voicing Nobita in the Red Angel Media dub of Doraemon, Ritsu Tanaka in the Animax dub of Kaon, and Edward Elric in the Animax dub of Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. The Pogo commercials clips of Meanie Man do sound like Hoffman doing a funny accent, so again, I believe these dubs are the same. Oh man, women are just nasty sometimes. Lily Tronkale notes she was the voice of various one-off characters. Lily can also be heard as Sakiko, Mariko's sister, in the most recent dub of Chibi Mariko-chan, Yui Hirasawa in Keon, and Alphonse Elric in the Animax dub of Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Tronkale was last on Voice 123 12 years ago, so 2009. This helps narrow down a window on when this dub of Anpanman aired, as it's listed as in production. Sadly, this is where the information on this dub ends. I can't get in touch with either actress despite my best efforts. Muriel Hoffman has a Facebook account and Instagram profile, but she has since stopped using social media. Hoffman has moved to the UK and retired from voice acting, so I can't get a hold of her at all. And I've had no luck getting info about Lily, but I do know she's active. I've kind of been grasping at straws in the hopes that another Hong Kong actor will know something, but so far I've received nothing. Hold on, what's this? Ah, Catherine Fu! She got back to me about an interview for my upcoming podcast. You may know her for being Mariko in the recent dub of Chibi Mariko-chan. And, oh, why the heck not? Let's reference Kaon again. Mio Akiyama and Kaon. Contact info for Lily Tronkale? That's great! May as well ask Fu herself if she knows anything. Huh. Well, I said two actresses before. Now you can make it three. Fu confirmed she was indeed involved with Anpanman, but her memory is hazy because it was over a decade ago. She told me she wrote many scripts for the show and, like Lily Tronkale, voiced side characters. Fu added one more role to Hoffman's list in the show, Dokin-chan, or at least I'm assuming it's Dokin-chan based on the description. She also confirmed Mike Bridges was in the show. Elisa got in touch with someone from the show, but still no word on who provides the voice of our doughy protagonist. As always, if I find out anything, I'll do a follow-up. Anpanman didn't soar through the skies speaking English for quite some time following this dub, but there were two important pieces of media released in the Western Hemisphere heavily inspired by Anpanman after 2009. First, a series that parodies Anpanman debuted and single-handedly captured the attention of Western anime fans. Yes, One Punch Man, the webcomic turned shonen jump manga turned anime. A lot of English speakers don't realize this hit series parodies Anpanman. First, let's look at the title. One Punch Man, in Japanese, is listed as Wanpanman, an obvious play on Anpanman. Second, look at the title character, Saitama. Bald head? Check. Hero costume? Check. Red and yellow colors? Check, although they're inverted. Simplistic fighting style? Check, although Anpanman has a kick as well, whereas Saitama only punches. And to go a step further, the very first enemy Saitama defeats is Vaccine Man, who looks like a cross between Baikin Man and a Namekian. He is even voiced by Ryusei Nako, the voice of Baikin Man. The other big piece of media to blow up in the West? 
Perhaps you've heard of a little South Korean pop group called BTS? Waiting for you Stop the music! Stop it! One more line and we have to pay for the song! BTS made a song titled Anpanman, a song about, well, Anpanman. They contrast the bean-filled hero to superstar superheroes like Batman and Superman. The song calls Anpanman a new generation and a new superhero, giving what you can to benefit others. They see Anpanman as an inspiration, and that's really touching. It shows how much of an impact this little guy has had in Asia. Keep both this song and One Punch Man in mind. 2020, two years after BTS's hit song released, the world was going to hell, the economy was tanking, and travel bans were put in place. But this wouldn't stop Anpanman from flying, this time speaking English. With interest in Anpanman on the rise thanks to pop culture inspired by him, it made sense to bring him to English speaking audiences. While it's not confirmed if BTS, One Punch Man, or heaven forbid the funny YouTube video of that mascot's drum solo during the Anpanman theme are the reasons, TMS decided to introduce a few of Anpanman's big screen adventures to Anglophones, dubbed into English. Fox's streaming service Tubi issued a press release on June 22, 2020, announcing six Anpanman films would be arriving on the platform in autumn of that year. To reiterate the point about the character's prevalence, the release listed the series' yearly merchandise sales being 60 million US dollars, and even mentioned BTS made a song about him. The movies didn't meet the expected autumn release window. On September 29, 2020, TMS announced at New York Comic Con that the number of films went up from 6 to 10. The dubs were to be handled by Macias Group in Miami. Auditioning for this dub didn't start until around this announcement, with recording starting a few weeks later. Unlike other anime dub studios at the time recording entirely from home, Masia's group had actors come into the studio directly to record their lines. TMS had a heavy hand in making sure this dub sounded right. Japanese staff members would listen over the phone to the recording process, understandably being sticklers for quality given this is one of the biggest properties in Japan. TMS and the director would stop mid-recording to tell, for example, the actress for Anpanman that she sounded too much like a girl or too much like a boy or something to fine-tune the voice. Once the Japanese side was happy with how the characters sounded, they let the staff in Miami take the reins. Masia's group's movie dubs keep the majority of characters' Japanese names, with only a few exceptions. Shokupan Man is named Breadhead Man, Horror Man is just called Horror, Kaba O is Kaba, and Kabi Run Run are Rot Rots. You know how I had problems getting a formal interview with anyone regarding the other confirmed dubs? Get a load of this. Alright, so uh, go ahead and introduce yourself. Oh, my name is Gia Burns. Um, I'm a voice actor and dubber uh, living in Miami, Florida. That's right. Anpanman's voice actress herself, Gia Burns, helped me immensely with behind the scenes information on this dub. Burns has mostly done work in radio, being in the industry 12 years and counting. In recent years, she has started to do more animation and dubbing, and Anpanman is her first lead role in animation. Originally, Burns auditioned for the role of Princess Vanilla, but the director saw the potential in her to be the lead role on Panman himself. If you'll remember earlier, One Punch Man was an immediate success in the West. Burns left the audition trying to remember how she knew the name on Panman. And I have a, actually he's my neighbor, a very good friend of mine. I was like, you know, have you heard of this like kid's character? Cause he's like, super into anime more than I could ever be. <laughs> and he was like, do you know One Punch Man? I'm like, yeah, why? And he's like, it sounds like the children's version of One Punch Man. I'm like, this is a 40 plus year legacy and they're bringing it to the United States. I'm auditioning for the lead. How, you know, you know, a lot of this didn't like, I, I didn't get how I would be the person that they would even consider doing this. Burns did not go out of her way to listen to Keiko Toda's voice for the character, only hearing it during the recording process. Actors are like sponges, and other actors' versions of a character may subconsciously affect performances. But the Japanese side, the director, and Burns herself all think it's perfect, and that's what matters. Jason Kesser is biking man in these movies, giving this bacterial baddie a voice reminiscent of Gilbert Gottfried. Kesser voices the friendly locomotive SL Man, too. Kesser can also be heard in Onihe as the lead character Heizo Hasegawa. To quickly go through the rest of the colorful cast of characters, Alex Machado is Breadhead Man, Paul Lewis is Curry Panman, Natalie Perlin is Cream Panda, Barry J. Taralo is Uncle Jam, Elaine Flores is Batako, Crystal Valdez is Dokin, 
and Rio Chavarro is the spooky skeleton horror. Speaking of him, he is also one of the ADR directors in this dub alongside Oscar Cheda. The first dubbed film titled Anpanman, Apple Boy and Everyone's Hope arrived on Tubi on April 15th, 2021, making these films the most recent dubs we've talked about so far in our series. The full movie list following Apple Boy is as follows in order of their original Japanese release. The Adventure of Happy, Star-Spirited Dolly, Purun the Soap Bubble, The Secret of Fairy Rinrin, Black Nose and the Magical Song, Revive Banana Island, Nanda and Runda from the Star of Toys, Shine, Kulun and the Stars of Life, and Twinkle, Princess Vanilla of Ice Cream Land. This one being Burns' favorite because, as mentioned, she auditioned for Princess Vanilla. And the legendary opening and ending theme, much like a previous dub, are faithfully dubbed into English. With the Princess Vanilla movie having only come out a month ago, there is no news on any further plans for this dub of Anpanman. The character is so new to the Anglosphere, it's hard to say if he has had or will have any influence on his new audience, let alone if he'll be flying onto Tubi again. Anpanman may have had a complicated and mysterious dubbing history, but his story has a happy ending, being given a broad streaming release to many countries and handled by a studio that deeply cares about this beloved property. If you would like to check out Anpanman, well, the only way to legally get it right now is through the movies recently released on Tubi. Otherwise, official episodes are currently unavailable in English, either subtitled or dubbed. But maybe we'll see this someday if these do well enough. I'd like to end off with Gia Burns' thoughts on Anpanman, as I feel it truly encapsulates what makes him so remarkable. Anpanman is, Anpanman is a feeling, it's a character, and it's in many ways a decision that we can all make to be better people for the fact, the simple fact of that you know what, being nice to other people just feels really good. With any luck, Anpanman will continue his kind-hearted adventures in the West, saving the day from Bikingman and providing food for the starving. And maybe one day, Anpanman's altruism will alter the attitude of the Anglosphere. And that's all for Season 1 of English Dub History. I'm going to take a break until springtime on episodes, but I'll keep posting other videos to continue streaming in the meantime. Please leave a like, subscribe, and leave in the comments what did you think of the dubs of Anpanman? What would you like to see in Season 2 of English Dub History? I have a lot of big fan favorites in the works, including an episode about a certain cyborg black cat, and many other surprises to come. I've been listening to you all year and hope to show you a lot of cool stuff in 2022. Keep leaving your suggestions in the comments, on Twitter, and on my Discord server. Shout out to Coops and Gia Burns for helping on researching this video. Check out Coops on Twitter, his username is at koopatroopa82. And you can check out Gia Burns on Twitter at Gia Says Hi and on Instagram at Gia Says. And shout out to all of my subscribers on Twitch and supporters on Patreon, on screen now. Supporters on either platform get to see my videos before they come out. So if you'd like to see my stuff early, get exclusive info on what's coming up, and a chance to ask questions to guests on my videos, please consider subscribing on Twitch or joining on Patreon. Thank you all again for a wonderful year. Happy holidays and keep an eye on my community tab to see when we'll be able to hang out, either digitally or in person. And just in case you didn't see the trailer, here's what's next for the start of season two. Release date to be announced, but keep an eye on Twitter and the community tab.